June, the sixth month of the year in our Gregorian calendar, and the official beginning of summer. The days stretch to their longest, and many subjects and thoughts fill the minds of our poets, such as Emily Dickinson, John Dryden, Sarah Teasdale, and Alfred Austin, who paint the month in poetry with masterly grace. Among our readers are Richard Midgley and Gisela Rowe. The Longest Day by William Wordsworth Let us quit the leafy arbour and the torrent murmuring by, for the sun is in his harbour, weary of the open sky. Evening now unbinds the fetters fashioned by the glowing light, all that breathe are thankful debtors to the harbinger of night. Yet by some grave thoughts attended, Eve renews her calm career, for the day that now is ended is the longest of the year. Dora, sport as now thou sportest on this platform light and free, take thy bliss while longest, shortest are indifferent to thee. Who would check the happy feeling that inspires the linnet song? Who would stop the swallow wheeling on her pinions swift and strong? Yet at this impressive season, Words which tenderness can speak from the truths of homely reason might exalt the loveliest cheek. And while shades to shades succeeding steal the landscape from the sight, I would urge this moral pleading, last forerunner of good night. Summer ebbs. Each day that follows is a reflux from on high, tending to the darksome hollows where the frosts of winter lie. He who governs the creation in his providence assigns such a gradual declination to the life of humankind. Yet we mark it not. Fruits redden, fresh flowers blow as flowers have blown, and the heart is loath to deaden hopes that she so long hath known. Be thou wiser, youthful maiden, and when thy decline shall come, let not dowers or boughs fruit-laden hide the knowledge of thy doom. Now, even now, ere wrapped in slumber, fix thine eyes upon the sea that absorbs time, space, and number. Look thou to eternity. Follow thou the flowing river on whose breast are thither borne all deceived and each deceiver through the gates of night and morn. Through the year's successive portals, through the bounds which many a star marks, not mindless of frail mortals, when his light returns from far, Thus, when thou with time hast travelled toward the mighty gulf of things, and the mazy stream unravelled with thy best imaginings, think if thou on beauty leanest, think how pitiful that stay. Did not virtue give the meanest charm superior to decay? Duty, like a strict preceptor, sometimes frowns or seems to frown. Choose her thistle for thy sceptre, while youth's roses are thy crown. Grasp it. If thou shrink and tremble, fairest damsel of the green, thou wilt lack the only symbol that proclaims a genuine queen, and ensures those palms of honour which selected spirits wear, bending low before the donor, Lord of Heaven's unchanging year. A June Night by Emma Lazarus Ten o'clock, the broken moon hangs not yet a half-hour high. Yellow as a shield of brass, in the dewy air of June, poised between the vaulted sky and the ocean's liquid glass. Earth lies in the shadows still, low black bushes, trees and lawn, night's ambrosial dews absorb. Through the foliage creeps a thrill, whispering of yon spectral dawn and the hidden climbing orb. Higher, higher, gathering light, Veiling with a golden gauze all the trembling atmosphere. See the rayless disc grows white. Hark, the glittering billows pause. Faint, far sounds possess the ear. Elves on such a night as this spin their rings upon the grass. On the beach the water fay greets her lover with a kiss. Through the air swift spirits pass, laugh, caress and float away. Shut thy lids and thou shalt see Angel faces wreathed with light Mystic forms long vanished hence 
Ah, too fine, too rare they be for the grosser mortal's sight, and they foil our waking sense. Yet we feel them floating near, know that we are not alone, though our open eyes behold nothing save the moon's bright sphere in the vacant heavens shown and the ocean's path of gold. To June by George MacDonald Ah, truant, thou art here again, I see, for in a season of such wretched weather I thought that thou hadst left us altogether, although I could not choose but fancy thee skulking about the hilltops whence the glee of thy blue laughter peeped at times, or rather thy bashful awkwardness, as doubtful whether thou shouldst be seen in such a company of ugly runaways, unshapely heaps of ruffian vapour, broken from restraint of their slim prison in the ocean deeps. But yet... I may not chide. Fall to thy books, fall to immediately without complaint. There they are lying, hills and vales and brooks. Dusk in June by Sarah Teasdale Evening and all the birds in a chorus of shimmering sound are easing their hearts of joy for miles around. The air is blue and sweet, the few first stars are white. Oh, let me, like the birds, sing before night. All in June by William Henry Davis A week ago I had a fire to warm my feet, my hands and face. Cold winds that never make a friend crept in and out of every place. Today the fields are rich in grass and buttercups in thousands grow. I'll show the world where I have been with gold dust seen on either shoe. Till to my garden back I come where bumblebees for hours and hours sit on their soft, fat, velvet bums to wriggle out of hollow flowers. <laughs>